Good morning, friends. Uh, today is the last day of what we know as Holy Week, also the end of 40 days of, of Lent. Uh, we celebrated Good Friday yesterday, last night, and uh, the day that Christ was crucified on the cross. A lot of people question, well, what, what took place after Jesus died on the cross and before he was resurrected? And there are several different portions of scripture I want to uh, address with you this morning. First of all, Jesus spoke to the religious leaders, to those following him, uh, his disciples, John 2, 19. He said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Of course, he was talking about himself and his resurrection. But what, what transpired? First of all, Matthew 27, 44, in the same way the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. But Luke records things a little differently, not that it's a contradiction in any way. Uh, but Luke 23, verse 39 says, One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly today I tell you, you'll be with me in paradise. So what happened after Jesus died on the cross, his body was laid in the tomb. He was buried. Uh, he was prepared for burial. Uh, the ladies came the next morning to uh, prepare spices for his uh, body. But many question, well, what took place? Some uh, believe that he went to hell, and um, uh, others say that he uh, simply went to paradise. Some say that, uh, as the scripture says, that he simply went to prison and preached uh, to those who had rejected Noah's message many years earlier. Well, let's read a couple more passages of scripture. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. But then we also see in Paul's writings in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, but to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives, gave gifts to his people. And what does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? So this is my conviction, not to take away from any other theologian or other people's thoughts, because uh, we really don't know exactly. We weren't there. But my belief is that Jesus went to this place called paradise. Uh, we also see another New Testament passage that I just didn't have time to read today, where Jesus uh, spoke of a rich man and another man by the name of Lazarus, a beggar. And the two died, and the rich man went into Hades or Sheol or hell, and the other man, the beggar Lazarus, was in paradise. So there was... Uh, simply a place called paradise before Jesus was resurrected where those who died remained until Christ set them free. And so Jesus said to the thief on the cross, today you'll be with me in paradise. So when Jesus descended in the one passage we read, he descended into the grave. How, what does it mean? Ephesians 4 and 7, what does it mean that he ascended, but that he also descended? He descended into the grave and he set captive those who were being held in paradise. And when he was resurrected, then he brought those with him. And now, as Paul declares in another passage, that when we die today, as soon as we die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we're not kept in paradise any longer. Our spirit doesn't remain in the grave because of Christ's resurrection but in this time between the cross and his resurrection, Jesus was letting the captives free, setting them free, just as he does for you and I. Let's pray. Lord, thank you 
for this day today that you've given us, this last day of Lent, this last day of Holy Week. Be with us now, Lord, as we prepare our hearts and minds for Easter, for our resurrection service tomorrow. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I want to invite you, if you're in the Ocala area, to come join us tomorrow for our drive-in service. You do not have to get out of your vehicle. Uh, we'll have a outdoor sound system. We'll also have an FM transmitter where you can listen to the sound on the radio in your vehicle. We can all practice our social distancing that we are encouraged to practice. But we want you to come out and celebrate Easter and the resurrection of Christ with us tomorrow, 1030 on the parking lot, Wings of Faith Fellowship, 5066 Southeast 64th Avenue Road. God bless you. We love you. Remember also, if you're not able to come out in person, then watch us on, on YouTube, Facebook Live, or you can go to our website. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.